Hello, this is Hope from Child Folk Productions with another Blender Quick Tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to show you the best settings that I use when it comes to rendering in Eve and rendering from the uh, viewport. Uh, to me, those actually those are the fastest when it comes when it's compared to rendering in Cycles. Cycles has sped up in 2.8, but it still takes quite a while to render. So EV's faster and the viewport renderer is fastest. <clears throat> One thing is, <clears throat> excuse me, with the EV and viewport renders, we have to adjust some of the settings. Uh, now my daughter, she's going to join us today because uh, she didn't want to go out with her mom and her little brother. You want to say hi, Sophia? Hi. Yeah, so she'll be watching some YouTube videos uh, on my cell phone while I do the tutorial. So if you hear anything in the background, that's just my daughter to have a lot of fun. All right, let me open up Blender 2.8. Let me see where that is. Okay, and I have in the viewport an image of a, a low poly vehicle that I've been working on for a new animation that I'm also working on. I'm going to use this as, a, uh, as a, an example of rendering an EV and in the viewport render. Now, if you look up into your top right hand corner, You'll see the shading options. Uh, we're going to focus on these last two, which would be the viewport shading and the EV shading. And to make sure it's on the EV shading, what you have to do is go to the render settings here. Let me press A to return my screencast keys. You see, hopefully they keep working. It's been activated. And then right down, let me make it bigger. Let's make this a little bit bigger. There you go. You can see a lot better. Now to act, make sure EV is activated, let's minimize this. We're going to go to the render uh, rendering tab here, click on that to make sure EV is selected. And we're going to then click on the EV shading mode there, click on that, left click. And depending on the strength of your PC or laptop, it may take some time to come up. Now this is a very low poly model. I imported this from my PC because my PC, I'm recording this on my PC, but my PC shut down. So now I'm doing this on my laptop. I have to make sure these settings are still valid. I think the color, the textures are off. Let me just give it a quick, it should be off. There's a texture right there. Mm -hmm. And we'll just try to work with this glass. Okay. Let's put a plane under here. So Shift A, pop up menu, click plane. I'm going to scale this up. And you can see from the. Let me just adjust this so we can just have better understanding of what we're looking at. I'm going to add a glass texture to this. Pull this down. Click on that. And shader editor. Made delete all that delete and shift a output material note scroll up on your mouse board to zoom in shift a again shader and blender comes with its own glass shader which is that right there let's connect those two together and it's just Showing what the uh, the uh, reflecting what's in the uh, environment, which is just a gray texture. Let's do the same thing with the car because the car is not showing up in the textures either. So delete that. Shift A. Output material. Shift A again. Shader. Principal shader. Just kind of short for some reason. Let's connect these two together. And we're going to color this in a, in a control T. Bring up the Node Wrangler, which isn't activated. I apologize for all these delays. Uh, this is just the, um, you know, when you have to record. Um, Tutorials multiple times, this tends to happen. 
control T. Like I said, this uh, my PC shut down, so I'm doing this on the laptop. Uh, let me see. Okay, cell phone's not going off. It's just one of those busy days, people, where things just happen that shouldn't be happening. So yeah. Okay. Then change change this to texture. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's uh, mute that M to mute, and then change this to. Uh, this is principal volume. Okay, shift A again, shader, principled shader. That's what we're trying to get. Connect. Thank you. And then let's color this red. And then we don't need any of these. B. Delete that. Okay. Control Z. Just delete the whole thing. Huh. Delete. Thank you. Okay, let's keep on going with our tutorial. I apologize for all the delays, but we're going to just uh, use this as our reference. We have right there in our car shader. And in EV, it will reflect the environment. So let's put environment in there. To put an HDR image in EV, we're going to click on our world tab. And from the uh, side menu, you see color here, we're going to click on that, that little circle. And turn that from color to an environment texture. And it turns peak, which means that it's activated. And in order to see the nodes up here, you don't really have to do this part in, in this the node editor. You can just do it right here in this little slot here. So we want to click on that with the folder. And I'm going to navigate to where, oh bless you Sophia, navigate to where I've saved an HDR image. Let's see, let me go up. Okay. Blender textures, where I've saved mine. Click on that, double click. And let's see what we've got here. Let's change the viewport. HDRI images. And we have this one. Okay, this is the only one I have on my laptop at this point, so I'm going to click on that. This is kind of big, but I guess this would, it's not going to override. It's not going to be overwhelming for the computer. Open image. And there you go. But as you can see, this doesn't really reflect well in the glass at all. It's really jagged. In order to kind of fix this somewhat, what we're going to do is go back to our render viewport shading, our render viewport settings here. I've tried to increase this, but that really doesn't have any effect on the end results. So we're going to turn to ambient inclusion. That increases the shadows. As you can see, the shadows here. And we're going to turn on screen space reflection. Let me zoom in. Hold down our shift and our mouse wheel and zoom in with that like that. We'll see it do something somewhat in the mirror. So screen space reflections. And it has done something, but it's just really, really small. And let's do something else with our with our glass here. Let's let's choose our glass um, shader here. And I've noticed when you turn the color a little bit darker it reflects more of the environment so let's left click on that and just pull this down a little bit they act somewhat like a mirror so you can kind of see you know the ACRI image here somewhat not too much but somewhat and you can't really see because with this there's bounce lighting I guess you can kind of see it but let's go back to our render settings here and in order to get more of a realistic look, there's a light here that should be somewhat out of focus, so to speak. Kind of like a, a fuzziness around it is too sharp at this point. In order to fix that, click on Bloom, and that fixes that. And Bloom has also has its own settings. You can increase the threshold via the knee, which I don't know what that is, the radius and the color. I usually just keep all those as they are and play with the color and the intensity. Once you pull the intensity up, it gets brighter. You pull it down, it reduces the that kind of fuzzy appearance. And let's change the color to like a yellow color because we're trying to represent the sun. Is there something funny, Sophia? You want something funny? <laughs> yeah, so that's that's that. So with Evie, as far as I can tell, 
this is like the best you can get with Eevee. Sometimes with shadows, you can see with the shadows, it's a little jagged. And sometimes whenever you activate shadows or you activate Eevee, the shadows have been turned off and it makes it even worse. As you can see, so if this happens, if you activate Eevee or render an Eevee and you see the shadows look really jagged, just activate soft shadows, click on that. High depth rate also helps somewhat a little bit. And they give you that a bit of a smoother appearance with the shadows. The flickering will not appear in your your final render this is just something that's happening because I think I'm recording so that's why this is happening but this is kind of the best you can get with Eevee at this point even if you turn up the specular of the vehicle if you want to if you want like a brand new looking vehicle turn up the specular on it let's turn this up and turn down the roughness you can see you have somewhat some kind of reflections on your vehicle on the paint but it's not that good and that's as far as I can tell at this point that's the best I can get with Eevee in terms of uh, rendering but if you want to have somewhat of a better uh, result and a faster render I would go with viewport rendering which is this you click on that and look at the difference you can see the reflections clearly in the headlights the reflections somewhat better in the car itself and only thing with Eevee is, or with the viewport renders, that you don't have the uh, HDRI image in the uh, surrounding. You can't see it at all. It's just gray, which is the default color of your viewport in the uh, viewport render. Now, if you want to adjust, because if you look at the uh, reflections in the glass, this is not what we had as an HDRI image. To change that, you click on this little arrow, and from this uh, drop down or pop up you see these are the selections you have you click on that so you have all these maps here if you want to import your own map click on this cog and from the cog click on install in the HDRIS drop down you click on that and you just navigate to where you've saved your HDRIS which is for me is here click on that install custom windows and you see it, it will appear there when you close that out, you click on uh, this uh, sample there, and there it is. And now it's back. It won't still appear in, the, in your environment, but you'll see it in the reflection. In order for it to appear, appear in your environment, you have to actually just import it as a plane into your environment. I'll do a tutorial on that later. But that's um, <clears throat> excuse me, that's the uh, difference between rendering an Eevee and rendering in the viewport render you get better results with the viewport render now in Eevee you can kind of improve the reflections by importing a reflective plane but sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't work I'll tell you what, show you what I mean let's click on Eevee viewport again and you click on shift A on your keyboard light probe reflection plane click on that and you'll get this these this little like uh, like a pen I guess a pig pen uh, that's how I like to call it you just have to kind of place it over over your uh, whatever you want to reflect and it will give you the somewhat of a better reflection but sometimes also that works sometimes it doesn't so the best bit that I go with let me delete that is rendering in the uh, viewport render which gives a better result and it's a lot faster than EV. And it also, uh, like I said before, it won't appear in your environment at all, but it will appear in the reflections of your glass or your reflective properties. And sometimes, and if you import a light, let's put a light in here for, for better results. And press Shift A. And let's go to light. And let's go to sun. Let's pull this up. On the Z axis and on the X axis. Let's turn it R. Now you'll see it appear here. But if we go to EV, you'll still see it appear. Sometimes what happens in Blender, and this is also kind of strange. Let's go back to the viewport render. Sometimes this is deactivated. And then once that's deactivated, the lights won't show. I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's a bug or what that is. But if you ever import a light into your viewport shading mode, 
and you're trying to figure out, okay, why isn't the light showing up? I don't see anything happening with my lights. I mean, I'm going to light settings and I'm playing with the color. I'm playing with the, the strength of it and nothing is still happening. All you have to do is go up to this drop down menu, click on that, and turn on screen lights and then it will come on because sometimes it just is turned off by default, which I don't know why that is. But yeah, so uh, those are part of the settings. So let me go over the other settings in Eevee to give you kind of better results. We've turned on the bloom. Let's go back to uh, the, uh, the uh, render settings here. And from once you've activated object occlusion, you turn on your bloom. And object occlusion, let's turn down the bloom a little bit, the intensity. Actually, let's get rid of this light. Now for the ambient occlusion, sometimes this doesn't really uh, give you true, accurate, physically accurate results. And the thing that I've seen that best helps is turning it up to four. Enter. And once we've turned it up to four, you can see that the shadow underneath the car is darker. That's what ambient occlusion does. It gives you darker, um, I guess, darker lines or darker shading. <clears throat> Excuse me, at certain points of your render. Once this is turned off, it looks flat. It doesn't look realistic. You turn it back on, increase the distance to four, gives you better looking results with your shadows. Uh, but let me go over my notes really quick just to make sure that I covered everything. Like I said, this is like one of those days where everything just tends to happen that shouldn't be happening, but uh, it is what it is. Okay, we've set our AO. So once again, once you turn on, you want to use the, the uh, EV rendering. Make sure EV is turned on as a rendering engine. Or you want to use the uh, viewport rendering. Make sure that's on also. You don't have to make sure that's on. That's, that's pretty much what you're going to see when you render just this, pretty much. So AO has been set. Your bloom has been set. Uh, the screen space, that helps with reflections in EV to some extent. And then, um, let me see, uh, you've seen how to add an HDR eye image to the uh, options that you have, which is here. Click on the cog, install HDR, and it installs your maps. Now, if you want to delete an HDR from your selections, you're basically supposed to press this, but sometimes, once again, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but today it works. On my PC, it wouldn't delete it, but it works here. Let's install that again. So, because we can need it, need it to render. Okay, there it is again. And the scene lights, we've done, gone through that, how to activate those. And I'm going to show you how to render this out and your uh, the viewport render. For Eevee, all you have to do when you want to render this out is just press F12 or go up here to render and then click render image and it does automatically. With the viewport render, it's different. And what you want to do is, what you have to understand with the viewport render, it's going to render everything that it sees in your user interface. All the lines, this grid floor, the uh, X and Y axis, everything. All of this is going to be rendered. And in order to have all that deleted, go up to this uh, icon here, click on that, and turn all of this off. Everything has to be turned off. That way, when you do render the viewport, it's just a clean slate of what you're seeing. And in order to do that, go to view, click on that, and click on viewport render image. That will render this image according to where you see it in the viewport. Now, if you want to render it through the camera, you have to press, our camera has been deactivated, but let's put in the camera shift A. And we're going to Add a camera. Don't pull this along the X and Y axis. Okay. Whoa, what happened to my camera? Okay. It's only showing like the front of it. Let's pull this down. Let's press zero so you can see it from the. Oh, I already have a camera in there. Okay, let's delete this camera. We don't need this one. Uh, let me see. Delete. Okay, so we already have a default camera and then that's the position it was in 
when we first uh, started the uh, tutorial. Once again, uh, okay, hold on, Sophia. Hold on, let Daddy finish with the tutorial. Hold on. Like I said, before everything happens, so we just have to keep trucking, keep moving forward. Uh, so we're going to go to, once again, when you want to render in the viewport, don't click on this view. This view is just for something other than the camera view of rendering. So click on this view and viewport render image, click on that, and there you go. And that is as fast as it gets. I mean, if you add more to your scene, obviously it's going to take a little bit longer to render but not much longer. That's how fast the viewport render is. And this is what I use sometimes to render images. Like a 10 second image, a 10 second render of an animation using the viewport render, it takes like, seriously, like 20 minutes. In cycles, it took me the same, the same amount of render time or end result render, which is 10 seconds. It took me like eight hours in cycles. And in, um, the EV render, it took about like three hours. So this is a lot faster. And when you apply, and when you apply like subsurface, to make it look better, you can apply subsurface uh, modifiers to it and so on and so forth and improve the textures. But still, it doesn't take that long to render the viewport render. So hopefully these settings help someone. I apologize for all the um, kind of adjustments I had to make initially at the beginning of the tutorial, but uh, yeah, like I said before, things happen when you do tutorials. Things happen, things come up, but you just got to keep moving forward. All right, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys who have subscribed and those who will still subscribe. And I hope this tutorial was helpful to someone with all the settings that are in here to help give you better results in the EV and in the viewport render. And I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, adios.